So let's talk about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Suppose someone gives you some matrix M. It turns out there is a special set of vectors, let's call them V, uh, and these special set of vectors V satisfy a particularly nice relationship. So if you take M times V, you get lambda times V back. We call V the vector, the eigenvector in this case, and lambda we call the eigenvalue. If you multiply the matrix times the vector and you get a number times the vector back again. We call this the eigenvalue equation. Let's just look at an example to see how this works. So let's consider the matrix M as 2, 3, 4, 1, and the vector V1 as 1, 1. So I multiply M times V1 after some calculation, I find that that's just 5 times V1. So in this case, I would say that V1 is an eigenvector, and it has an eigenvalue, lambda 1, equal to 5. It turns out there's another eigenvector for this matrix, and so I'm just going to give it to us. So that's V2 is equal to minus 3, 4. So again, let's take M times V2, and after some calculation, you find that it's minus 2 times V2 back again. So in that case, I would say that V2 is an eigenvector, and it has an eigenvalue, and we could call lambda 2 in this case, equal to minus 2. So that's the idea of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. A fair question at this point is, so what? I mean, that's kind of cute, but why do we care? Well, consider uh, a matrix W, which is, say, minus 4 times 3. Now, suppose I want to write that in terms of V1 and V2. There's many times I'd like to do this in physics. How do I do that? Well, I need to have minus 1 of V1 and plus 1 of V2 in order to get the right components. Or I could just write that directly in terms of V1 and V2 like this. Well, one advantage of this is when I take M times W, well, this is a little bit easy to calculate. So it's just minus 1 times M times V1 plus 1 M times V2. But I know what M times V1 is. That's just the eigenvalue times the eigenvector V1. And same thing for M times V2. That's just the eigenvalue minus 2 times V2. And so the answer I get here is minus 5 V1 minus 2 V2. So what? Well, in some sense, I'd say this is quote unquote easier to calculate the product M times W. Well, OK, maybe in this case, um, it's not easier when we put it in terms of eigenvectors. Maybe a more uh, convincing reason we'd want to do this is, in some sense, eigenvectors are a natural basis for the matrix. And so if we write out our, matri or our vectors in terms of eigenvectors, uh, we're kind of seeing a natural basis for, those, uh, for that vector. How do I find eigenvalues and eigenvectors? And all the examples we had above, I just kind of gave them to you. Well, the first step is actually we need to find the eigenvalues themselves, not the eigenvectors first. So let's start back at the eigenvalue equation. Recall the eigenvalue equation was m times v is equal to lambda times v. I'm just going to rewrite that, move the lambda times v over to the left-hand side. And then I'm going to factor out the vector v. So that's m minus lambda times i times v is equal to 0, or i here is the identity matrix. So that lambda i is just, well, it's lambda along the diagonal. OK, so this is true if the determinant of this matrix, m minus lambda i, is 0. And this is what I'm going to use to find my eigenvalues themselves. So in particular, for our matrix m in our example, the, the determinant of this combination which is the determinant of, well, it's 2 minus lambda, 3, 4, and 1 minus lambda. And that determinant must be equal to 0. So let's multiply that out in all of its gory detail for the determinant. And we get something that looks like lambda squared minus 3 lambda minus 10 is equal to 0. This object here is what we call our characteristic equation for eigenvalues. And we need to solve it in order to find the eigenvalues 
for our matrix. So we can solve this uh, by factoring it. It's lambda times 5 times lambda plus 2 is equal to 0. And so we get lambda 1 is equal to 5 and lambda 2 is equal to minus 2 for our eigenvalues. OK, so now that we found our eigenvalues, let's find our eigenvectors. So our eigenvectors, let's go back to our characteristic equation, or sorry, our uh, eigenvalue equation. mv1 is equal to lambda1 v1. And let's rewrite that again as m minus lambda i times v1 is equal to 0. So in order to find what v1 is, let's let v1 be some arbitrary vector, a, b, where a, b are some constants we want to find. So let's write all of this out then. m minus lambda times i, we already calculated that. That's 2 minus lambda, 3, 4, 1 minus lambda, times the vector a, b is equal to 0. And our goal here is to figure out what are these constants a and b that make this true. So let's take lambda 1 is equal to 5. Then we get minus 3, 3, 4, minus 4, times a, b is equal to 0. Writing that out, we get minus 3a plus 3b is equal to 0 and 4a minus 4b is equal to 0. It's pretty clear to see that both of these imply that a is equal to b, and in fact, they're degenerate equations, so they, there's only one condition, which is a is equal to b, and that's all we know. So we could choose an eigenvector, v1, that looks like 1, 1, or you could choose any multiple of this if you want. So for example, you could choose v1 is equal to 2, 2. And that also works. You'll find that it's still an eigenvector with the same eigenvalue. Okay, so that's the eigenvector associated with lambda 1 is equal to 5. There's another eigenvector for lambda 2 is equal to negative 2. And this is your turn. So now take a moment using the same technique to find the eigenvector for this eigenvalue.